baseball is dead. Rest in peace. I feel like uh, <clears throat> I feel like there's only I feel like there's only one place that we can start Dallas today. Yeah, that Mad Bum outing, not uh, not what we all called were. it. Is that is that what you're talking about? No. Is that where Mr. Miller, there, Mr. Right? Miller, is that the starting? Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. It's, uh, Miller time. Some big news to wake up to this morning, Dallas. It, 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 Miller time, right? Huh? <laughs> I told you. Is that what you're talking about? That, a, that's not what you're talking about, is it? There's a statement released this morning, Dallas. I don't know if you saw it, um, but it was from the Oakland A's. The A's have signed a binding agreement to purchase land for a future ballpark in Las Vegas. We realize this is a difficult day for our Oakland fans and community. For more than 20 years, the A's have focused on securing a new home for the club and have invested unprecedented time and resources for the past six years to build a ballpark in Oakland. Even with the support from fans, leaders at the city, county, and state level, and throughout the broader community, the process to build a new ballpark in Oakland has made little forward progress for some time. We have made a strong and sincere effort to stay here. We recognize that this is very hard to hear, we are disappointed that we are we have been unable to achieve our shared vision of a waterfront ballpark. As we shift our focus to Vegas, we will continue to share details about next steps. Dallas? Yeah, it's a tough day. Tough day. Um, this isn't anything that I haven't been prepared for this isn't anything that i have been blindsided by these are conversations that have been happening as the statement reads for 20 plus years right long before me um but the time is the time is now i i can't say long after me the time is now um i'll tell you jared i have not i honestly i don't know that i've slept since the news broke and i'm in texas so i'm a couple hours ahead of cali time mm -hmm. and when this news dropped my phone might as well have just started fucking rattling i think my phone at one point in time walked over to the balcony and like tried to throw itself off the phone off the fucking balcony <laughs> and uh, i i do there's a lot of mixed emotions going on man there's a ton of mixed emotions going on because you have to look at this through so many lenses and i have been and when I say forced to look at it through all of these lenses, I mean, I've been on the player side. I've been on the fan side. I've been on the employee side. Like I've, I've seen it from all angles. So I understand each and every perspective. And that's the hardest part about this is there's not one side that is going to be appeased with any one statement. And I can tell you from the reactions that I've received from lifelong fans, fans that have been here since the 60s that have watched them blossom into the organization that they have become, they understand things to an extent. And then there's just the numbing effect as well. And there are, <laughs> yeah, man, there, we talk about peaks and valleys in the game and don't let the highs get you too high. Don't let the lows keep you down. There is no staying even keeled with this. This will be an emotional roller coaster for the remainder of the time that the organization is in Oakland and has either made the move and started to put the shovel in the ground or until they've come to a different resolution, if that is something that even still has any possibility to it. So um, I mean, th this is, I, I tell you right now, it's, it's like the office scene where everything is going just absolute fucking mayhem. Just complete mayhem right now. Emotionally, that's what's going on. I think with the fan base right now, understandably so. I agree. <clears throat> I've seen I've seen it on Twitter. I guess like if you're uh, if you're just learning about this now through the podcast, welcome welcome to the conversation. I think if you have been on Twitter this morning and you have 
have seen this kind of play out slowly. I mean, I, if, you, if you're plugged into it, then you've seen this coming for some time now. But if you're just now finding out about the Vegas thing uh, uh, today, where you're listening to this or from Twitter, I guess the questions for you, Dallas, as someone who is on the front lines over there, how quick could something like this happen? Like, like open it. They're saying what, 2027? Like, it's not like it's going to be next year. The Oakland A's are going to be in Vegas. Right. Well, the one thing that we have come to know and understand about Las Vegas, first and foremost, is if they want something built there and they want something established and up and running there, it's not going to take an awful lot of time for that to happen. So once you've gotten through all of the red tape and the ribbon cutting and the and the shovel hits the dirt, it's I mean, you're rolling. You're rolling for a lot of different reasons. One, because it's a city in which if you're making moves and you've got the shovel in the ground, it's not going to take long to get to the finish line there. And it's because there's business at play here and people are people are waiting for these things. This is a domino effect. And while it might look like a really big domino, which it is, it's still a domino in a row of other dominoes that will likely when I say fall, I mean fall into place to establish the revitalization of this area in Las Vegas. So in terms of how quick a deal like this happens, I think you always have to consider the landing spot or the site, the home or the new home, which would be Las Vegas, and their desire to get this project up and running. And then you have to consider any sort of hurdles, whether it be economical or legal, that need to be cleared from an organizational standpoint so that they can get that shovel in the dirt as soon as possible. So I I think to put a timeline on it, um, much like has been said for the last 20 years regarding this, would be a, a little difficult just because we're not exactly sure where things are at as we speak. Because right now, what we have in place is an agreement to purchase the land and essentially start to figure out how a ballpark fits there. That's what this is. Uh, If you could speak candidly about it, at what point was there an event? Was there a conversation? Was there a moment in time where you felt like this was inevitable? Like we were on a crash course for this happening? Um, uh, No, not for me. Because, I mean, you guys know, like, I, I constantly am trying to look for the positive. I want, I, my glass will always remain half full. And it might look not as full as other glasses, and I can understand that, but that's how I choose to live my life. So I always want to feel like there's something waiting at the very end to please both people, both parties, both sides of the conversation. And there was never a time where I felt like, we're now just going through the motions. This is just an exercise. And it's because there has to be a financial investment to an extent in clearing hurdles to keep yourself in one place, right? So the environmental impact reports and all of those things that cost money to have done on the organization side of things, those are efforts that you would like to think weren't being made in vain. So as long as that money was being spent, and the efforts were being made to continue down what was labeled parallel paths to figure out how we could establish a home or a new home in Oakland, California, I was all ears. Super excited about that because that means, much like they're talking about in Las Vegas, the revitalization of a neighborhood, an economic boost potentially. And for my friends who live in this area and for friends that I have recently made who live in the city, I understand what the impact could be. And so why wouldn't I wake up and want to be excited about the potential for that? So, uh, I, and I, and I'll, I have no problem admitting that there was an effort at times to blind myself to the potential of a move. Why? Because that is part of reality. And just like you, I'm human. And there's some parts of reality that I just don't want to fucking entertain. So, um, I mean, literally going off your last sentence there my next question was going to be 
uh, I don't even know if you can really speak about this, but what is what would this mean for you professionally? Like, are you are you tied to the Oakland A's? Like, if they were have if if they become the or when they become the Las Vegas A's, is that like a whole new regime where they would like? Are, would you be uh, are you are you part of the entity that is the A's franchise that would be going there? Or because it's going to be the same ownership, right? So they're going to be going to, to Las. We don't even know if it's going to be the same ownership. So yeah, like, what does this mean for you professionally? Do you even know? I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, I know that I bleed green and gold. I know that regardless of who owns an organization, regardless of who's managing the team, regardless of who's selling popcorn in the stands, the athletics organization. And everybody that's a part of it, and the fans that have cheered this organization on, that is who I bleed for. And there's going to be people who never want to watch an A's baseball game again. I think we can all understand. And there's going to be people who say, you know what, I'm not going to let that, this move, deter me from a childhood full of memories that I have. I'm going to ride with this club because that's what I do. And I'm here for them too. So I am Stretch Armstrong right now. In the middle, no idea what's going on. Fuck, I don't even know what's inside of me. And I'm being pulled in multiple directions. And all I know is that the fans of baseball and the fans of this organization are who I stand for, who I stand with. Growing the game has always been my number one priority. And where that happens, how that happens, I've never really had much control over, Jared. I got a, I got a change up and I can hit a Nats ass and that got me to where I am now. And after that, the baseball gods are the ones who are, are pulling the strings here. And I'm okay with that, man. I'm okay with that. I'm not somebody like, uh, I'm on this rock to ride the wave. That's what I'm here for. And the game of baseball has allowed me to catch a wave and ride it for as long as anybody has ever ridden a wave. Um, so I, I do. I woke up today with a lot more question marks than answers. Uh, obviously, uh, we have a lot of fun on this podcast with the A's being terrible and it's their reputation that they don't spend money. Do you think that part of the move, because the, the league can't force a team to spend. There is no salary floor although that would be a great idea to implement somewhere down the line do you think part of the conversation to move the a's to vegas would be like hey we're gonna need you to spend a little bit more if you're gonna be bringing this this franchise to a to a market like vegas who a few years ago they had no professional sports teams teams now they're about to have three like you can't bring the oakland a's product to a new market and be exciting the way that it exists today. You just can't. Yeah. I, like, are, what are you asking? Like, is it, do you think that there, there have been conversations where it's like, Hey, you know, you guys, you are what you are right now. Like you're not invested in the product. But when this the, changes, it's yes, gotta be different. Yes. Um, look, I think, would, I think we would be foolish to think that in any business realm and not this situation specifically, but in any business realm, when a move is being made, that there is not some sort of wink, wink, nod, nod understanding that there is going to be an expected shift in approach. And whether or not that conversation has happened, I don't know. I don't know. Because we can have the conversations about competitive balance. We can have the conversations about, uh, you know, about revenue sharing and, you know, where the A's have fit into that conversation. And when you think about all that stuff, it does kind of make you wonder, is there room for a conversation like that? Is there room for spurring along some of that activity? But that's when you circle back to your point, which you kind of answered your own question initially. And I think you understand that is you can't force anybody's hand. Like you don't get to walk into a room as the commissioner and tell X, Y, and Z owners that they're going to spend their money this way. And then look at the other owners and go, I'd really like for you to spend your money this way because it would really help the no but again competitive balance the thought is that the franchise is so storied and has such a legacy behind it 
that there is no way we would want to continue to allow the franchise to flounder. How can you? It is one of the most iconic sports franchises in American sports, not just baseball. There's a lot of nuance to this answer. Uh, like it's it's not like a black and white. There's there's a lot of gray with this answer, but I, I'm curious to see how you would would answer the question. How do we get here? Um, <laughs> ineptitude. Ineptitude, and and that's that's on all fronts. And over a tw- we're talking about a twenty year period, twenty years, twenty years. Just say that out loud. 20, tw- 20 years, right? So if it's taken 20 years to get to this point and we feel like we could potentially be staring at a resolution within the next five, it makes you think that there probably could have been a resolution to this a lot sooner, whether it's on Major League Baseball's behalf, the ownership's behalf, city government, state government. There's a lot of different layers to this, right? So many different layers. Like I told you, I I was on Capitol Hill with the president, Dave Cavill, in Sacramento years ago, right? Fighting for the opportunity to drop a ballpark in our community and explaining what the added benefits could be. That was five years ago. I don't know. Six years ago. It feels, I, I, shit, I don't know. So, and again, like th- that's that's what happens when stuff like this goes down is the finger pointing, right? You, them, them, we, them. Well, if they would have, we could have. And if they, well, they didn't, so we didn't. And and that's what ineptitude is. It's the passing of the buck, the passing of the blame, until eventually, I think we are we are left and we find ourselves in a scenario where something drastic has to happen, has to happen, and that's where we're at now. I guess finally, uh, before we move on, because I don't, uh, I don't want to beat it into the ground, and I'm sure there's a lot that you want to say that you can't say, that maybe someday you will be able to say, <laughs> uh, but as it is unfolding and nothing is really set in stone, uh, I think uh, the listeners can at least respect and understand that Dallas can't just say exactly what's on his mind at this point in time, although he would probably love to. So the last thing that I'll ask you on this topic is I'm sure there are uh, A's fans who have been listening since the starting nine days, then the baseball is dead days. Maybe there are A's fans who have never listened to this podcast before ever. They're probably tuning in for the first time to hear from you about this this topic. Uh, What do you have to say to the A's fans out there that are sad about this, that feel lost about this, um, that don't know how to feel about this. Like they kind of turn to someone like you to be like, Dallas, tell me how to feel. Like, I don't know how to feel. Like I don't feel anything and I'm confused. What do you, what do you have to say to those fans? Um, <clears throat> oh man. Uh, I'm sorry, man. Um, I'll be honest, man. Like I said, I got a lot of, I've had a lot of, a lot of conversations since 2.30 this morning. Um, And I'm in a group chat with uh, a lot of folks who go to fantasy camp, come to the Ace Fantasy Camp. And I got a fucking buddy from Australia who called me in tears, man. Um, And this is what I've kind of written out. And I don't know that it'll ever make the light of day, but I thank you. Thank you for loving the game unconditionally. Thank you for allowing the game to take a part of your soul and never give it back. That's what makes a day like today really hurt. Something I've learned through tragedy, loss, and even triumph is the road traveled to those inevitable destinations is paved with Memories filled with love and joy and tears of all kinds. From the arrival in 68 to our triplets in 72, 73, and 74, the unforgettable season in 89, the images, the emotion. 
there's been countless iconic moments that you have all shared together and that we have all been lucky enough to experience together at the ballpark over the years. And I wanted you folks to know just how much I love and appreciate you. I have been able to live. I've been able to live out a fantasy my entire life. And it's only because of incredibly dedicated and faithful fans like you. I am so terribly sorry. And please know that my heart is with yours. And that's where I'm at, man. That's kind of all I got. Um, <clears throat> Jay Hay, from the uh, the outsider's perspective, what was your initial reaction when you saw the news this morning? Just stared at my phone, man. Just stared at my phone. What like, can I say? Are there people right now that are kind of like reaching out to you, Dallas, to for answers that you don't have like is that frustrating i mean i'm sure it has to be because either you i'm sure there's people that are reaching out to you right now that either are asking you questions that you do have the answer to and you can't say it or you just simply don't have the answer and there's nothing that you can do for these people um like how are you how are you planning to like navigate that like i'm sure like you're you're now going to become like the fucking oakland a's like call center Mm-hmm. I I have I have no problem. I have with pride uh, taken the arrows for this organization. I have with pride taken the arrows for this fan base, and I will continue to do so because I love those fans. And I don't give a fuck what anybody else has to say about our ballpark, and I don't give a fuck what anybody else has to say about our fifteen hundred screaming fans. I would line those motherfuckers up just like the Spartans did against any fucking army any fucking army. So as far as navigating this, I'm going to navigate it like I would anything else in my life. I will control what I can control. I will do my very best to communicate everything that I can in a way that allows me to continue to do my job and that allows me to continue to resonate with fans. Um, and, And I hope that fans understand how difficult things Sure, things could could be for me moving forward because I do feel like I'm on my knees in between two bodies laying on the ground, gasping for air. Not only do I know how to give CPR, I also have a defibrillator right next to me and I'm not administering CPR and I haven't even opened the defibrillator and it's not because I don't know how. So that's what it feels like. <clears throat> All right, we'll hit a read, and then uh, on the other side, we'll uh, I guess we'll, we'll we'll pass the ball around to everyone else to talk about this. Uh, the baseball season is in full swing. Whether you're rooting for the home team or betting on your favorite player, DraftKings Sportsbook has got you covered for all this season's action. Right now, new customers can place a five dollar pregame money line bet and get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets if your team wins. Plus. Everyone can hit one out of the park with the DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Boost your winnings with each leg. You add up to 100%. Um, I did a same game parlay last night. I said Joe Ryan was going to give up more than three hits for the first time in a start this year. That was correct. Um, I think I had like Verdugo plus two plus total bases, but I had a uh, I had a nerfy the, the no runs in the first inning. And Corey Kluber did not play nice. Like we're going to talk about in this podcast, we're going to talk about uh, some starters that may be headed out to pasture that have some some hardware that have some dirt under their spikes. Corey Kluber probably belongs in that conversation. Uh, Join the big league action right now with the DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app and sign up with the promo code Carabas, C-A-R-R-A-B-I-S. New customers can bet just $5 on any pregame money line and get $150 in bonus bets if their team wins only at the DraftKings Sportsbook with the promo code Carabas. Uh, before we move on, because we've got a surprisingly, I mean, we just did a podcast yesterday, but we have a ton of topics to talk about today. Uh, it's also 420. I'm sure that Dallas has some things that he needs to get to this evening, uh, which is like the what the four year anniversary of when Dallas almost ended my life in San Francisco. <laughs> Jared was literally walking on clouds. 
Yeah, I thought I was going to die. I genuinely thought I was going to die. Um, because they like switched the pen out. Like I, there was like I had like one pen and I was like, yeah, this is manageable. <laughs> I was like, this is like, uh, this feels good. Like they I can switch the pen they out. Did. They did. They had, I was, there was one you pen. Hit, and I was, you hit old Uncle Dal's fucking pen. And went, <laughs> <laughs> I had a moment there where I was like, this is it. I'm, I'm going to die. And then, uh, we 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 were walking down the sidewalk, and the sidewalk was sparkling. <laughs> it was the sidewalk. Uh, it it looked like uh, it looked like it had sparkles in it. And then we went to some bar where they had fucking ping pong. And I'm not good to begin with. Dallas is like professional ping pong player. And he's just fucking rifling these <laughs> ping pong balls off my face because I have no reaction time. I was uh, just, it was like playing fucking ping pong with a drunk Stephen Hawking. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> it, it was not. Uh, it was, I had fun, but I mean, outside of the I thought I was going to die part. <laughs> um, Jay, hey, Joseph, do you guys have any uh, any thoughts on this A's news before we move on to other topics? Oh man, like Dal said, historic franchise for sure. I don't know if like a lot of younger fans realize that how like <clears throat> old the athletics organization is, even going back to Philadelphia, how historic, how good they were in the 70s, how beastly they are, sick jerseys. A lot of crazy stuff has gone down in the Coliseum. And you know, that's kind of been the whole thing since the beginning. They don't like to spend a lot of money. It seems like after a while that can hurt the uh, their ability to make money and get fans there. And it's kind of like got to the point where it seems like it's going to move and it's kind of sad. But also exciting if you are, you know, in Vegas, some opportunity there. There could be some crazy shit going on in Vegas. You know, you wish there could be both at the same time, yeah. but you know. That was my first thought was they need to spend more. They need to do something about this roster because I can't even imagine like opening night for the Las Vegas A's and they're like, eh, Tony camp. And it's like, all right, dude, like what? Like, let's, let's, uh, let's get some names and numbers in here so we can uh, fire the folks up in, in Vegas, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Jay. Hey. Um, I don't have a ton to add. I'll just say that, you know, it's one, it's, Acting like a small market ball club is one thing. We have plenty of those in this sport and many others. I would say that the current situation is definitely a choice. And uh, I guess my hope is that it more closely resembles um, what we've known the A's to resemble for certainly my entire life um, as a team that uh, is a routine threat to make the postseason every year, regardless of uh, where they rank in payroll. Um, I hope we get back to that brand of baseball. Uh, and as a former eight month resident of the city of Las Vegas, uh, I am curious to see how, if that's where it ends up going, I am sort of perversely curious to see how a baseball team works there. Um, yeah, that's way down the line, but those are my thoughts. Uh, before, before we woke up to this A's news this morning. Uh, the lead story was going to be Max Scherzer getting ejected by Phil Cuzzy for having a legal substance on his hands. Uh, that was the story of the day yesterday. Max Scherzer, Dodger Stadium, goes out there, is told to uh, change his glove. And it even it even looked like Phil Cuzzy was being playful with him at one point because he, he was asked to change his glove had the new glove and then Phil kind of like shoved the glove into his chest in like a busting balls manner. Scherzer comes out from the next inning and gets inspected once more. They determine and the umpires even said like we like felt his hands and whatever sick, sticky substance was on his hands was on our hands for the next two innings. Like it wasn't something that just could like easily come off and Mets fans were very, very, very defensive about this because I, all I did was tweet the clip and say, I, I forget how I worded it, but I was basically saying like, it's, it's very ironic 
that Scherzer was one of the guys that was the most demonstrative about the original sticky checks. He pulled down his pants. He let the fucking umpires run their fingers through his hair, all that. And he was one of the three pitchers to get ejected for it. I never implied or said that I thought he was cheating. I d- certainly don't. Th- like I think it's obvious that he wasn't cheating because he was spoken to the inning prior. How stupid. And this is this is what he said. How stupid would I have to be to come back out the very next inning with even more sticky stuff on my hands after they gave me like a, a warning or whatever for it? No, I don't think Max Scherzer was cheating. Uh, I so here here's ultimately where I arrived on this. Well, well, let's play the Max Scherzer sound first, and then uh, and then we'll kind of get into how the fuck MLB needs to handle this. So after the second inning, uh, you know, my hand, it was a little clumpy uh, from the rosin and sweat that it was clumpy and Phil was told me to wash off. So I washed it off, uh, you know, came back out there after the third, you know, with alcohol, you know, I washed it with alcohol um, and rosin. And when I went back out there, um, you know, the alcohol for a little bit there can be sticky if, in rosin. It, that can happen. So he's like, that's too sticky. You need to go back on there, wash it off again and reapply uh, the rosin. And so I did that. And then at the same time, he thought my glove had too much rosin on it. And I was like, okay, if that's a problem, you know, there's, there's nothing going on. It, you know, he's like, you need a new glove. Like, okay. So come back out, uh, pitch a third, uh, and knew I was going to get checked in the fourth. So I, I'd have to be an absolute idiot to do, try to do anything when I'm coming back out for the fourth. So in, in the, in the, you know, after that third inning, um, I'm in front of the MLB official that's, that's underneath here. I wash my hand with alcohol in front of the official. Um, I didn't apply a rosin and then I grabbed sweat. Um, when I didn't, I didn't go back out there and Phil Cuzzy says that my hand's too sticky. Uh, I, I don't get it. Yes. When you use sweat and rosin, your hand is sticky, but I don't get how I get ejected when I'm, when I'm in front of MLB officials doing exactly, exactly what you want. And being deemed my hands too sticky when I'm using legal substance, I do not understand that. So after the I, second inning, so uh, all right, the, a couple of thoughts just from that Max Scherzer sound, and uh, Jay Hay just just brought this up. Um, John Harper of SNY hears from a source that Max Scherzer has quote zero chance of avoiding a mandatory ten game suspension for being ejected um, for a sticky substance, but. I mean, first things first. Major League umpires are being asked to do so many things now that they were not asked to do just a couple of years ago. It's hard enough to crouch down and call balls and strikes with baseballs traveling at 102 miles an hour. You can barely even see them. That's a hard enough job as it is. Now they've got to see. Are you looking at the pitcher? Are you standing in the box? Are you on the mound? Are you are you engaged? Are you are you going? Are you starting your delivery before 15 seconds? Okay, now I have to go determine th- if this substance is subjectively sticky or too sticky or not sticky enough. What kind of sticky substance is it? Like they're being asked to do all these fucking things. If you have league officials that are at these games. Your Major League Baseball, you're a multi billion dollar corporation. Can you not employ other people who would know better to to examine the to perform the sticky checks so that we don't have a, a first ballot legend like Max Scherzer getting ejected for using a substance that you as a league have provided him to use? Ask yourself this question though, Jared. First is who would you be asking to do that? Because there's a good chance that you're going to start losing on the baseball side when you start to maybe aim towards the science side of things. So the umpire would be the happy medium between someone who understands the difference between sticky shit and just resin or just rosin and just being an umpire, right? So they're the happy medium. Otherwise, who are you going to get? You're going to get somebody in there who doesn't have the feel of baseball and is like, nope, this is what it is. So what the umpires are doing, they are responding to the request to be robots. 
and they are being robotic about it. And I can't say that I blame the umpires for the reasons you just laid out because they have so much on their plate right now. And I had a great example of that yesterday in our game. Is everybody froze? No. Okay. Aledmi's Diaz, <clears throat> Aledmi's Diaz was at the plate and uh, he fouled the one, one off, right? Fastball in, fouled it off. Boom. Blew up his hand. So he stepped out and he's like, he shook his hand. He like he, he instantly right after the swing, like flexed his hand and then walked off and like was grabbing his hands, you know, like massaging his hands like, oh man. And the umpire didn't even look his way. Didn't even look his way. And then like, then looked over there, cranked the clock. Let's go. And Alidmi's Diaz never asked for timeout. He had already used his timeout, but just the feel right where last year, what would that umpire have done? He would have walked out, gave the pitcher the ball, come back, cleaned off home plate, and then got behind the plate in which during that time, Alidmi's Diaz would be working out the buzzy in his hand because he just fucking bang, got rung and then the game would have moved on. And that is just the feel and the understanding that has existed in the game that has now been perceived as dead time and downtime and lagging and we need to speed this up. And so you're now asking the umpires to forget about the feel that they've had this entire time for the game. And you're asking them, you're basically telling them, look, when stuff like that, when baseball stuff happens, fuck, look the other way, start the clock, get it going. And so now umpires are like, fine, sticky shit. If it's in it, fine, we're going to start. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. And now here's how we're going to do it. And we'll see how this goes. I, I don't want to say it's a revolt in a sense from the umpires, but the umpires are, I, I think, going, you know what? <laughs> we're asked to do so much and we are catching a lot of fucking arrows, man. So f- we're going to we're going to do it by the book. And then we're going to have somebody else answer for that, because all we're going to respond with is this is what we're doing. And we have been told to do this. It's funny that you keep saying umpires, because this guy, Phil Cuzzy, is the only guy who's ever gotten anyone in trouble for foreign substance. Correct. Right. He's the same guy with all the instances, right? With every instance that's resulted in an ejection every, for a pitcher. Isn't that right? Yeah. There have been three ejections. Phil Cuzzy has been responsible for all three. So that's that's clearly an example of one dude saying, this is what I'm being told, and this is how I'm going to do it. And that has always been the issue with rules in baseball is not the fact that they exist or don't exist. It's been to what extent are they being enforced? Are they being policed? Is it actually being watched? And the answer for a lot of the time has been no. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like, is this cheating? It kind of depends on what you consider cheating. Because technically, by the rules, I have the rule right here. Like, if you use substance, okay, if rosin must be consistent with requirements and expectations when used excessively or misapplied, example, on your glove or other parts of the uniform, it may be determined prohibited foreign substance. So by that, if you have a fucking rosin on your jersey a little bit, technically, that's cheating. So that's the problem with all this shit. There's just well, like, yeah. what level are you going to actually enforce it? And and on the glove, like you said. And why do we put it on the glove? We put it on the glove, quite honestly, because going back to the rosin bag is kind of a grind. And now with the clock, you don't yeah, have that much time to do that. Clock, and, you don't have time to do it. No. It's not even and, that you don't and, have, I, I saw, when I was in spring training, I saw a pitcher essentially make the choice do I want to? Do I want rosin or do I want to sacrifice a ball right. here? And he chose the rosin. <laughs> and and <clears throat> some and b- b- what's great about this is you can ask pitchers. Believe it or not, sometimes you don't want all of the tack that grabbing the rosin bag gives you. Sometimes you don't want all of that. Sometimes you just want a little bit. Sometimes you only need a little bit. Sometimes you only need it on your fingers and you don't need it on your palm because you're not sweating, but you're, you're just, the ball's a little dusty. You just got a foul ball. You need a little, so you just need a little, you don't need a lot. So go back and grab this rosin bag. That's going to fucking stick me out, clump me all up. Cause that's the other thing, right? With Herman is he's fondling the rosin satchel 
in the uh, in the dugout in between innings, right? Wasn't yeah. that the conversation? Can't yeah. be doing that because that's mm-hmm. that that would be considered under Joey reading the rule. That would be considered excessive application. And I'm pretty sure that's what Scherzer was doing. I looked at it. I don't. He wasn't going to the rosin bag. The rosin bag didn't move mm-hmm. while he was on the mound. Yeah. So so now, if that's what's happening, then do we is is this a suspension under excessive application it has to be because if Scherzer's telling us that he's gone in and washed it off not once but twice with rubbing alcohol and I'm here to tell you that there's alcohol and then there's some other shit that you use to get the stuff off after you know after a game um that that's that's what you would use and he's right like if you've wet your arm with any substance or wet your hands and then you've grabbed rosin again like you're going to create some tack. You're going to, yeah. it's just going to continue. This kind of goes back to the point that I was making two years ago about, I guess not like fans, not understanding the difference between spider tack and everything else. And this is kind of the perfect example to, to go by where, where I don't care how much rosin that Max Scherzer is using. Like you, Having a better grip on the baseball is not the same thing as manipulating the baseball for a, a higher spin rate to throw fucking witchcraft sliders. Like so that's just, what I was going to ask you. Do we have the numbers? Why, how, why is that not a defense for him right now? Why is I that agree. not a conversation point? What is the number? What do the numbers look like? Did my, is my spin during these innings any different than what it was prior or any different than what it's been in the early part of this season? Let's compare that because if that's what we're using in real time to bust guys, well, then we've got to we've got to compare that. You have yeah. to take a look at that. If that's been a real defense, or if that's been a real uh, talking point or a <clears throat> sticking point, sorry about oh. it, for pointing, uh, then you have to entertain that again. And that would be something I would be doing if I were Max Scherzer right now. And that'd be something I'd be doing if I wasn't baked and <laughs> wanted to jump on Savant and compare for fucking four starts ago. I'm just not going to do that right now. Yeah. Uh, but you at home could could do that and you could get back at me and holler at me and be like, yo, buddy, he wasn't. It's the spin's the same. It's I would imagine that if the spin was noticeably different, that those graphics would have been going viral yesterday they would have already been talked about yeah it would have like already the, been a thing the videos of him getting ejected got like millions of views like everyone was talking about it yesterday so if the spin rate was that much better that would have been part of the conversation i didn't see anything about spin on twitter yesterday and max scherzer so but that's the difference spider tack you're trying to increase spin rate well, you're trying to get the baseball to do crazy shit um with the phil with Cousy Rosin, common denominator yes Yes, you're you're absolutely right. And with Phil Cuz the Phil Cuzzy common denominator cannot be cannot be overlooked, cannot go understated. Like that's a that is a thing. There's been one dude who has been there for I mean, it's like fucking Forrest Gump. <laughs> He's been there for it all. He's been there for every ejection. <laughs> and know what he said? You know what he said? Really he said has. that Max Scherzer had the stickiest hands he's ever felt. He said <laughs> Yeah. He yeah. said that? How about that? Yeah. Yeah, and the idea, well, here's the other thing. Let me say something. Time out. First of all, for him to say and say it publicly that they had it on their hands two innings after, prove it. Don't say that. That's uh, that's a legend. Pr- prove that. Otherwise, we just have to take you at your word, right? And you're an umpire. We know you're not perfect. So uh, I, 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 don't, I don't like that. And if you're somebody who has gone to the ballpark and you don't have anything sticky on your hand, like you haven't touched the rosin at all, and now you've touched rosin, my guess is you're probably going to have some rosin on your hand and maybe until you wash it off. Mm. That's just coming from somebody who's and I, I saw a tweet from this guy. He's in the Orioles organization. He said like the new rosin, the Pelican grip rosin or whatever is like way stickier and it could, yeah. And it can, stickier? it's way tackier if you're using it with sweat and stuff. So that could, that could be a thing too, because you guys have heard me, Joey, you, you weren't here for this, but I've talked Jay Hay and, and Jared know, about my uh, affinity for the Seattle rosin. I was made privy to the Seattle rosin as a, as a young pup in the show before rosin became uniform across the game. <clears throat> <laughs> that rosin hit different, but 
Yeah, bro. Shouldn't they just, I feel like you can police this on your computer. Like you don't even need to check guys because it's like if they're using spider tech and you know what you're looking for, you can kind of tell. And it's pretty easy. Well, I've, I, correct. It's, it's right there. It's it, like you go to the tool that the guys that are using it are assessing to determine whether or not they're effective. Like, why are you using any other tool? That's what they're looking at in the lab. <laughs> Ripped out slider. What that? What? What, what do you got? Twenty nine hundred. Thirty one. Okay. All right. Cool. So then, go to your fucking computer and look at that because that's what they're looking at. Mm. Jay, hey, feels like you have. I, I went to the computer. Not much there. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking nerd. Uh, what do you got? No, there's not much there. Um, you know, his spin rate, his spin rate is up on one pitch, down on another. Uh, there's just not, yep. not anything conclusive, at least as I understand spin rate and all that stuff to be. So uh, can probably move on. I also subjectively listening to the audio, like I just believe Max Scherzer. Um, that didn't sound to me like a guy who was trying to wiggle out of a situation. It sounded like a guy who was, um, if he broke a rule, did so under a, a misunderstanding or a misapprehension of what was being enforced and what has been allowed. That's that's exactly what that sounded like to me. Um, yep. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you read his lips during the exchange with Phil Cuzzy, he was saying, "I swear on my kids' it. lives." Yeah, I said it on the. I said it on the. We, we were like our game was going on. We're broadcasting it, but we showed the clip. We showed, and I'm like, you can read his lips. <laughs> And I yeah. said that I was like, I swear, I was like, he's swearing on his life. He's, he's swearing on somebody's <laughs> life. Yeah, <laughs> I think his, he what, said his in what the interview said, afterwards. Also, yeah. He yeah. said, I told him, I swear on my kid's life. I'm using sweat and rosin. Yeah. And Max, Max just gives me like, dude, I will, I will headbutt you because I'm telling you the <laughs> truth. And you're not getting me kind of vibes. Like, <laughs> I wonder what, uh, you know, to Phil Cuzzy's comments about those being the stickiest hands or stickiest fingers he's ever seen in his life. I wonder what uh, sticky fingers of the rap group on- oh! of, of the rap group Onyx would say about that. You know what I mean? Uh, shout out Kirk Jones. <laughs> but- <laughs> Jay, Jay's in his bag this morning. Yeah, he is. Yeah, you can't get this content anywhere else. <laughs> that's great. um, that's great. So I guess we'll stay tuned to see what becomes of uh. The Max Scherzer suspension, which reading this sounds like it's it's almost like you you automatically get a DUI if you turn down the breathalyzer. Like you automatically get suspended for 10 games if you get ejected for sticky stuff. Like it doesn't matter if you were actually drunk. Doesn't matter if you actually had spider tack or a foreign substance. It's just you get ejected. That's your bangs for 10 games. That's a tough one. That is tough. Um, anyways. Some beers can say that they are brewed for baseball, but only Blue Moon is brewed by baseball. Beer and baseball just go together, and no beer goes better than the one that was literally born in a ballpark. That is Blue Moon, which was created at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. It's the natural choice for opening day and all season long. It's, it's a comfort beer. So Dallas, probably going to have some Blue Moons tonight uh, just, to, just to feel better. Blue Moon I've, does, ordered a, I've ordered a pony keg. There you go. Blue Moon makes the heart happy. So uh, some Blue Moons on Dallas tonight if you see them. Uh, where are you? T- down in Texas? Tejas? Yeah, I'm down in Texas. Uh, you, I got, you got I the gotta Strohs or the Rangers? Uh, playing the Rangers. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going. <laughs> Buddy, hey, I got a day off today. I mean, come on. The baseball gods were at work today, Jared. I got a day off. It's 420. God, yeah. You know, some some tough news for the, for the organization today, mm-hmm. for the fan base. So um, the baseball gods were like, you know what, DV? We're going to give you the day off to just fucking take this one, all right? So go stare at some fish and fucking get right. Yeah, get, get ready for the ass beating that's coming your way. Whoa, with what? The no, no. second best run differential in Major League Baseball, the Texas Rangers, with its refreshing flavor with Valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander. Blue Moon Belgian style wheat ale is a one of a kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. Blue Moon was brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia and get you excited for the new season. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something that's one of a kind? It's bold flavor, bright explosion of color, an iconic orange slice ritual guarantees of one of a kind beer experience. Perfect. 
for spring weather. Best served with its signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful hazy color. A beer this good only comes around once on a blue moon, but you can enjoy it all season long. Bring the ballpark to you with Blue Moon Belgian style wheat ale. It's a one of a kind every time. Check out shop.bluemoonbrewingcompany.com for beer and baseball merch or visit get.bluemoonbeer.com slash rocket to find Blue Moon delivery options. That is get.bluemoonbeer.com slash rocket. Blue Moon made brighter. Celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden Colorado Ale. I think it's very cool when the listeners of the show will send us pictures of um, they're drinking Blue Moons at ballparks. They're selling Blue yeah. Moon at different stadiums. They're supporting the show by cracking they see a nice th- cold Blue Moon. They want to see them cheeks, Jake. They want to see <laughs> yeah, them cheeks. They do. <laughs> they do. You, uh, me, Jake. you also, you stopped doing the weather update with Jake. People well, are asking. Because, because there was a shift in, in, uh, in what? In, in cadence in the show, a shift in mechanic. I feel like we, we started to hit a roll and then we, and then you started rapping and yeah. I wasn't able to get in, get out, you know? Well, be better. Figure it out. Oh, people want, oh. people want to know what kind of moon it is. All right. Well, because you know what it is, uh, I got to tell you, the, the seasons are turning. The leaves, the leaves are coming on back. Mm-hmm. All right. Fair enough. So just be no, ready. I'm just no, saying, no. it's it's just feedback that we get, and we try to we try to appease no, the fans whenever we can. A- absolutely fair. <laughs> absolutely fair. Fair fair criticism. Um, Madison Bumgarner got mad at someone <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> You know what? I fucking love let it. Me, I let, love let it. Let me, it. Let me hit it. Let me hit it. Let me hit it. Well, hold on. Shut up. Ready? Breaking news. Madison Bumgarner got mad at someone <laughs> for, for, for taking a swing a little too heavy. A little too confident in that swing. Madison Bumgarner does not like God, it. Think of how fucking love- stupid that sounds. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it right now. Look at if if <laughs> if the game is changing the way it is, I'm not asking you uh I'm not asking you to like it anymore, okay? I'm just asking you to appreciate that that was that that is a very real part of this game still. Like to some people, well, for him. Just, I don't yeah. I don't want it or him to go away. But I also don't want to stop saying he's a loser every time he behaves that way. <laughs> <laughs> like that's fine. I want those personalities in the game. I don't mind heart like red asses. That, but that, I'm still gonna call him yeah. a red ass loser about it. Like let the kids, let the kids. Play, I love Jay. it. Hey, he's only 33. You're acting I, like his I career's done. He's 33. <laughs> I, he's got, well, obviously got some fire. Regardless in the of what his age is, the numbers are telling us. Might that's be what I'm saying. Time. He's th- he's 33, going on 55. Yeah. But the <laughs> so. I've said this before about Mass and Bumgarner. I don't I I don't side with him on his views on baseball. Like don't flip your bat and don't celebrate and put your head down and run. But to Jay Hayes point, I love that he exists. Like you can't yeah. just have kumbaya in baseball. Like you need no. people like Mass and Bumgarner who take exception to that. I want players to do it. I want players to to feel good about it and comfortable doing it. But you need the Madison Bumgarners of the world. Like every story needs a protagonist and an antagonist. And well, he's 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 the villain, but he's not like a bad guy. No, and the no. other thing too with Max Muncie. So this is why I love Mad Bum so much. For for all the things that he does that I don't agree with that I wouldn't do if I played Major League Baseball. He was asked, like, what's the like why what's the problem here? And he's like, I honestly, I just can't help it. <laughs> he, is there something genetically wired in his brain that's to hey, where he could scary. say like, I like bat flips, but I've got to, I've got to speak up and I've got to get mad about them. I can't that's help amazing. it. He has like I, Tourette's. I, I told you, I've been telling you for how long that the dude is just that he's just built. He's just fucking built different. He is. He's just, he grew up in a yeah. town of uh, 200 like a, mad Madison bum gardeners. What do you think? <laughs> This guy is from a city where everyone's last name is Bumgarner. He's not like you. Every, every He's time, not like you. Every time, every time he takes the ball, 
it's like a portal opens up from like 18 <laughs> something whatever and yeah. like they just let he just fucking he's just unleashed on the world every five days and then he goes back to some 1880 whatever civilization where he's I, fucking roping cattle and just doing you know doing cowboy man shit and then he comes back and is like i'll just you know throw fucking I, 78 innings or whatever it is in the postseason and go get a fucking ring. I, I think we need to show some I think we need to show some urgency on appreciating him every fifth day because savor those last few drops. I'm not sure. That's such wow. bullshit, dude. Can I well, are, you, are you taking old Geller out back can I drop right now, some notes Real fast. Yeah, please. Yeah, so uh, 150 starting pitchers have thrown at least 10 innings pitch this year. Pretty low threshold, but when you only go three and a third every every start, you know, Got to keep the threshold low. So 150 pitchers. He ranks 144th in ERA, tied for 145th in WAR, 140 tied for 148th in strikeout rate, tied for 146th in walk rate, and he ranks dead last in win probability added uh, among those 150 starters. So take from those numbers what you will. They're all bad though. (laughs) Damn. Um. Tori Lavello, uh, he said about Madison Bumgarner um, that they are essentially not committed. He said, quote, we got to talk it over on whether or not he'll make his next start. So my question is to the panel, do you hmm. think that all those Pitches throwing on two days rest in the playoffs, throwing 100 innings in three weeks. Does that have anything to do with the early decline? Uh, I believe that, they're, like, like how old's Kershaw? We were just having this conversation about Kershaw. 34. <clears throat> 34. He's two years older than And Bumble. think about how we, yeah, and we, and we look at both those dudes. I mean, he is, he's, so he's two years older than Bumgarner. Um, but yeah, I think there's, I think there's something to that because both of these guys essentially had like, I don't know, it feels like second careers in the postseason. Yeah, like maybe Kershaw not as I, I don't know, but just the overall body of work, like Kershaw, how many years in a row was Kershaw <clears throat> pumping two hundred innings? It just yeah, though that that wear and tear is very real. I mean, Clayton uh, Madison Bumgarner hasn't pitched in the postseason in seven years. No, I'm just saying like that stretch though during the during the Giants run, <clears throat> yeah. him him like his body of work his his innings amount compared to other people's innings amount. You know, does this like, just like, make you appreciate Kershaw even more though? Because like Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw has double the postseason innings of Mad Bum. And he's done it over, I mean, 2008 to as recently as last year, he's been pitching in the postseason. Whereas Kershaw, you're talking about three runs or no, four. Well, 2016, they, that wasn't, uh, they got bumped in the division series. But yeah, Mad Bum. 2010, obviously, 2012, 2014, <clears throat> but then 2016 was a short lived run. So he has in his career 102 and a third postseason innings. Kershaw has 194 postseason innings. So, so he's essentially pitched an entire extra season just season, in October. Yeah. I didn't, yeah, when I said career, I, I probably if, meant if you look If you look at total innings pitched between 2011 and 16, which is really what we're talking about for Madison Bumgarner because he was not a full-time starter. He only threw 100 regular season innings in 2010. So if you go from 2011 to 16 and include postseason innings pitched, he's second in baseball with 1,358 and a third. The only guy who threw more innings pitched over that stretch was David Price. Um, So Kershaw was Verlander third, Kershaw fourth. Uh, but Kershaw's only eight innings behind him in that stretch. So even when you look at Bumgarner's most heavily used period where he was pitching in the postseason, he really still wasn't even pitching more than Clayton Kershaw was uh, during that same stretch, which is interesting because that's not really how I remember it necessarily. Um, but I think a lot of our a lot of our memory of Bumgarner, I think in the postseason too, is kind of 
I think as time has passed, it's sort of all coalesced into the 2014 campaign, right? Like, it, it, I know he had other good postseasons, but in our head, it's well, like all remember- 2014 now where he did accumulate about 50% of his career postseason innings just that year alone. Yeah. 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 And remember, <clears throat> he did fuck his arm up. Like he had a. Oh, and the he, dirt bike accident. Yeah. That he like fucked up his like ribs and everything. Yeah. Like, like AC joint, I think. Yeah. Something like that. It was just not, not good. So that. <clears throat> Even even as you know, doesn't big that seem and like not like a Madison Bumgarner thing to do? <laughs> just like being reckless on a dirt bike. Don't you boys like that stuff, man? You'd be well, surprised. He <laughs> may not have been. He, he probably wasn't being reckless. He, it was probably a, like a freak accident on a dirt bike, which is you know. I don't know. How do you wipe out on a dirt bike unless you're being reckless? How do you like just well, getting on a dirt a, bike dude, in you general? Could catch is a reckless. Rock, I, you could catch it. You could. Catch I could a see him on an ATV. That's that's more country boy. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> Hold on. What? Why? Because it's two more wheels. What? It's a Stone Cold Steve Austin used to ride a ATV to the ring. If he rode a dirt bike, then it would be more like X Games. But if you have a, an ATV with four wheels, yeah, that's it's more a slippery redneck. slope. Slippery buddy, slope. I got plenty. Yeah, I got, I got I got plenty of redneck buddies right now that would love to show you their two fifties. <laughs> Really? Well, you, yeah, you grew up on the I farm mean, when they. Get... Oh, breaking news! Breaking news! The Diamondbacks are designating Madison Bumgarner for assignment. DFA Mad Bum. Wow. 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 Are they, was, are they wow. taking their wow. shots directly from this podcast? Because I feel like we That's we crazy. were all over this one. Yeah. Is someone <laughs> are we is this is wow. live? <laughs> yeah, are we like streaming? <laughs> do we do this live every day and I don't fucking know about it? Wow. Damn. 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 I guess that post start meeting right, was so- pretty quick. The analysis yeah, was that pretty didn't brief. Take long. Yeah, they um, pulled up his savant so, page and saw all blue, and were like, "See you, Mad Bum to the race." <laughs> <laughs> what, to be their seventeenth <laughs> starter. <laughs> Mad Bum to the ranch, I think. Yeah, I, Mad Bum to the ranch. Yeah, like what team? What team? Mm, this is a good question. Actually, needs the Rangers? Fucking Boach. Boach is going <laughs> to bring a them great back. Fit. I know where he's going. Boach wow. is going to say, Boach will be like, hey, you got, they you have got lefty. <laughs> you got 34 million remaining <laughs> on his contract. Oh, man. Boach and Mad Bum would never be able to work together because, like, well, well, I guess Boach wasn't going to go out there for a mound meeting, but could you imagine, like, Boach having to get out there in time and then the conversation between him and Mad Bum? Well, that's that's going to be 30 seconds in itself. Just get the words out. Yeah. You know where I'm looking at? San Diego. You're looking. No. Yeah. No. San Diego. Well, Jay, let's let's circle back. Who um who who was who is the kid you said you were looking for that's going Brandon to Brandon fought for the D backs, you're saying? Yeah. 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 Who did, Jared, you say did they Brandon have a uh, corresponding move with the designation? Did they call somebody up? No. Not yet. So he's like one of the top prospects. Um, his ERA is a little high so far this season across, I believe, three starts. But um, seventeen to three strikeout to walk and thirteen and a third. He had a three eight three ERA in one hundred and sixty seven innings across double and triple A last year with two hundred and eighteen strikeouts. So he's also a guy. I mean, to that point, he's also a guy who could theoretically step in and carry the load for what sounds like the if he threw one hundred and sixty seven innings last year, um, and he's good enough to stick. I mean, I think this could potentially make them a better team. Not to like kick dirt on the Bumgarner thing, but there's every reason to believe that this guy is going to give them a better shot than Bumgarner, who objectively was pitching as one of the five worst pitchers in baseball this year. And has been mm-hmm. and to be fair, like it let's not pretend like the Diamondbacks are making like some sort of rash decision as it relates to Bumgarner's performance. This is not this is the worst that it's been. But this is like quite an extended run. Now. I mean, the enti- basically, 
the majority of his time with Arizona has been a, a massive disappointment. He's, he has a 5-2-3 ERA and 69 starts. So this is, yeah. if anything, maybe a little overdue. It's- So he'll once he clears waivers, he'll be available to any team for seven hundred twenty k. Prorated, pro-rated. yeah, prorated. Um, <clears throat> which I mean, you're not really saving too much on April twentieth, but uh, that is uh, a necessary move by the D backs. I think it 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 kind of like I respect it because obviously you're talking about a, a Hall of Fame caliber pitcher. A mm-hmm. guy that you know, you look at. It's not. It's not a great comparison because obviously Miguel Cabrera was a is a legend in Detroit, but the Tigers are telling you Miguel Cabrera is more valuable just being around a guy like Torque, and the D backs are telling you, yeah, like I, our guys could learn something from him, but like we value the roster spot more. Well, Jared, it sends a message. And it's a great message to send to the group you have right now. And when I say that, I don't mean like you had to get mad bum the fuck. No, 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 no. If you're a player on this roster right now, you should think about the move like this. This is a legend that we are saying goodbye to. Why? We have, as a group, earned the right to ask a legend to step aside so that we can do what we are doing right now and we can position ourselves moving forward to continue to do that right now, which is win baseball games. We've got a great mix. We want to do everything we can right now to continue to build and solidify the vibe we are creating right now. And unfortunately, the tutelage aspect of what Mad Bum can bring together or could bring to the table right now isn't as valuable because the Tigers, as you just said, are in a completely different spot than the Diamondbacks are. And the other key difference too, right, is that Miguel Cabrera was and is a legend for the Tigers. Madison Bumgarner was not a legend for the D-backs. He was a rival for their division rival, in fact. So like a little bit easier to say peace out too, right? Yes, for sure. Yeah, for sure. There's no history there. There's no good memories. No, like no. What so, are and, the good and, and, memories? Like when the like if say Mad Bum hypothetically right signs with another team and he comes back to Arizona, what fucking video package are they running? <laughs> like, well, nothing, and that's why like that's that's why those kind of became tired, you know. Like, oh hey, you had uh, twelve at bats for us. We appreciate your time here. Yeah. So wow, <clears throat> interesting news, and the fact that we were on the subject when that <laughs> that news dropped is crazy. Oh man. Um baseball season's in full swing and there are games on all day, every day. And when I'm watching all the games and recording all these podcasts every week, it could be tough to handle it all. Uh, but thanks to Xfinity 10G Network, I can stay on top of everything. With Xfinity 10G, you can power an entire house full of devices with ultra low lag. So you and everyone you know can stream every single game at the same time and never miss a pitch. And if you're on the go, Xfinity has your back with millions of Wi-Fi hotspots. Introducing the next generation 10G network only from Xfinity. The future starts now. Learn more at Xfinity.com slash 10G. That ad reads great because it's like it is just literally describing my life. Like out like I'm in the media room right now or the podcast room. Uh, I'm putting a, a new router in here. And then right outside is where the nine TVs are. And then yesterday, I just put a fucking 65-inch TV in my goddamn bathroom. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. I, uh, that, was, that was honestly one of the first things I put into my house, my, my first house, when I bought my first house. Yeah. I put an entertainment center above my bathtub. Yeah. So that I could, That's where in it the is. morning, I'm watching, I'm watching football. I've got all the cha- – and I'm just – oh, it was – it was epic. Yeah, well, so there's I've got like the big glass shower on the right and then to the left it's kind of like kitty cornered is the bathtub. So mm-hmm. I put the TV above the bathtub, but you can pull it out and swing it so that if you're in the shower you can <laughs> still see it in the shower. It's fucking awesome. Love it. Yep. Yeah. Good move. Can't miss it. Um Okay, those are the those are the big stories. What else did I have written down? 
for today. I don't think. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Like, we didn't even mention the fact that it was Wilson Contreras. It was very funny, like, out of the, like, <laughs> the fact, I just, Mad Bum just, like, he just kept calling him a pussy. <laughs> yeah, he's like, fuck you. He's like, no, he said, shut the fuck up, you pussy. Like, there was a delay. He's like, shut the fuck up, you pussy. Well, fuck it's because I think, it's because, because <laughs> Mad Bum had that, uh, like, that initial assessment, like, oh, you pussy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't uh I didn't have too much to add to I mean I I don't like Wilson Contreras <clears throat> and I I've made that very clear like when he was beefing with the Brew Crew I was like dude fuck this guy. He kept complaining about getting hit when he was leaning into pitches and I was like <laughs> this guy's a bitch and then Cubs fans <laughs> were all over me for saying that and then the second that Contreras leaves to go to the Cardinals. He started talking all this shit about the Cubs. And I was like, I fucking told you guys, like, this guy sucks. He blocked me. He blocked me on Twitter uh, during the 2016 World Series after he, like, pimped a fucking ball that went off the wall. He thought it was a home run and it was like a single. I was like, this dude kind of sucks. And he didn't like that. But uh, I was right. Suck it. Um,. I guess my final thought then is, uh, did you guys see, I mean, this is pretty cool because it's been, it's been billed as judge versus Otani, like Mike Trout has just been completely fucking cut out of the equation when it comes to talking about the angels, which I get it. He's not the guy that wants that attention or wants to be billed that way while Shohei is a male model, you know? Uh, so Mm -hmm. two different, two different vibes. But Aaron Judge, mm-hmm. Shohei Otani, yeah. Judge goes up and brings back a would be Otani tank from the Three Sword Samurai, and it wasn't Sword really samurai. It, it wasn't really even a, a a clean snack. Like he went up and like kind of cupped it, came off his hand, he caught it with his bare hand, um, but a fucking robbery nonetheless. And then proceeds to go up in the bottom of the inning. And drop dick. Hit a fucking tank. So I feel like that's pretty cool. I mean, the and, whole series and has been built. He made as another Judge diving Otani catch week. in like the eighth inning. So yeah. I tweeted it out because he robbed he robbed Otani. It would have been a solo homer. Then the bottom half he had a two run homer. Then he he uh there was I forget, it might have been like Taylor Ward or something like that. Hit a ball in the gap. He caught that. Um so it, it was like a 2-2 ball game, but it would have been 4 nothing if Aaron Judge was on the bench. Yeah. Um I uh I'm gonna I mean is it is it now is it now Otani to New York? Just just based on my theory of why he Jake chose Mute, this fucking guy? He's had too much. <laughs> he's been overserved. He's is been it Otani is it Otani to New York now? Because he's gonna be like, look. He's like, I already, you know, the trout thing. I told you guys, you love trout. Okay, cool. Here I am. Showed you that. Now, now as a judge, is it judge is the guy that you think is okay? So now I'm going to go to New York, and now I'm going to. Ah! <laughs> oh, I don't, hey, I in a long line of people who do not even want to think about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Stop don't putting it even... onto the universe. Don't even uh, want to think about that. This weekend, uh, let's see. What, what do we got for some premiere series Tatis to tune back. into? Um, Tatis oh, yeah. comes that's, back tonight. Yep, that's the... This weekend, we also have a World Series r- 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 rematch. Yes. No. Yes. The Braves versus the Astros. Unfortunately, the Friday game is on Apple TV. But you get Braves Astros this this weekend. Uh, the twelve and seven Pittsburgh Pirates. That's right, baby. That <laughs> the twelve and seven <laughs> Pittsburgh Pirates look to keep it going. Uh, the Blue Jays and the Yankees are going head to head at Yankee Stadium. That's another one that no one will be able to see because it's on Apple TV. Uh, that's a that's a nice little divisional matchup. Um. A mid-off between the Mariners and the Cardinals. A couple 8 and 11 teams that are super disappointing to start the year. That one takes place in 
uh, Seattle this weekend. The Rangers look to demolish the three and sixteen Oakland Athletics. Uh, I saw yesterday. What are they on pace to lose like one hundred and thirty games or something like that? That it's because it's just a it's a little bit of a bumpy start. That's yeah. why. I mean, so it's magnified. Like right. when you start doing the whole small sample thing and you extrapolate. Yeah. Like right. yeah, you those extrapolate. are gaudy numbers. Those are gaudy numbers. Yeah. Right. I get it. The yeah, Oakland let's, A's. Let's talk. Let's talk in September. The Oakland A's September. have caught and surpassed the Tampa Bay Rays for the Bizarro World Run Differential Title Race. Uh, they are at negative eighty six. The Rays are at plus eighty three, which is great. That's. I didn't give up. I didn't give up hope that 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 the uh, the Oakland A's would get to negative one hundred before someone got to plus one hundred. We're gonna get there. It's gonna be the Oakland A's. They are. They are them. They are him. They are we. <laughs> That's really it for serious serious <laughs> Cubs, Dodgers. Eh, that doesn't do anything for me. All right, we got to take a break and talk about Zin nicotine pouches. We're always talking about what a team needs to get to number one, but Zin nicotine pouches are already there. Zin has helped millions of people achieve lasting chains, earning the title of America's number one nicotine pouch. If you're a smoker or you're a dipper looking to make a change, look no further than Zinn. Zinn is made with six simple ingredients and is available in a wide range of varieties, including spearmint, citrus, and even coffee. And it's available in two strengths so you can control your nicotine satisfaction. Because it's discreet, you can enjoy it anywhere, anytime, so you never have to miss a moment of the game. Plus, Every can of Zinn earns you points towards premium items like tailgating gear, top-of-the-line tech, Zinn swag, even gift cards. Find your Zinn at your local convenience store or online at Zinn.com. That's Zinn, Z-Y-N.com. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. All right. Any, uh, any final thoughts, Jay? Hey? Yeah, I'd like to do a Cubs mea culpa <clears throat> from our podcast on okay, yesterday. Please. I started by saying sure. that they are boring and terrible before getting into some stats on Justin Steele. And you know what? A, a listener called me out on it, and he was correct. I'm ass- I think it's a he. Um, that, that opinion is a vestige of last year and the year before when they were boring and terrible. Uh, that is not the case this year. They have some yeah. interesting things going Co- on. Uh, Patrick Wisdom... Uh, it looks like he might be turning some of that uh, drop. Yeah, I mean, dick. the swing and miss and the chase is still there, but <clears throat> he's currently riding one of his hot streaks. So that's you got to enjoy that. Marcus Stroman um, kind of back to his ground balling ways, which I think is interesting. Justin Steele delivered yet again. Um, so he continues that run of about a one five ERA and- over his last 15 starts. And you know what's fun about him, Jay Hay, is he's just a he's just a two pitch yeah. guy. And it didn't used to be that way. That changed from twenty one to twenty two, and it really really worked yeah. for him. And that that is cool. Yeah, it's like a, he's like yeah. I know Spencer Strider gets like due credit for being kind of like that guy who's sh- absolutely shoving off of two yeah, but pitches. Justin Stills not throwing fucking ninety eight. No, 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 I know. I'm saying like, and, like Strider gets the attention for being the two pitch guy. But to your point, Justin Steele is is dealing in his own way in that regard. Um, yeah, yeah, and they and and the uh, look. I I love that they are they are uh, closing the gap on the swing and miss too by adding <clears throat> adding a guy like like having a guy like Madrigal, Nico Horner, and the fact that he fucking like those dudes run. Yeah, I just uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, my my sentiments on the twenty twenty three Cubs were were updated and reflected. I'm going to stand by my my opinion on what Cody Bellinger's future looks like, Bro, but that's a debate for another day. It's, it's great. Cody Bellinger just had a five hit game, Jay. I'm, I'm aware. Yeah. And then he followed up with an RBI it. knock, game winner. Got lots of tweets about his uh, his one good game this season. Oh. We'll be monitoring that, no doubt. Respect. I'm on the case. Don't worry. You guys will all be very Dude, upset about it. Oh, and I'd like to say... Flonase. I'd like to... Yeah, respect Flonase. I'd like to... I'd like to... <laughs> I'd like to say something else. What's up? Uh, well, that's why my eyes are red. It's allergy season. Uh, you know who else hit a homer? Uh, who? And last time I checked, Cuts? you got to hit the ball in the air to hit the ball over the wall. Ooh. That was Eric Hosmer. Yeah, he did. He did. Shots <laughs> fired. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. Yep. 
When's the last time you saw a ground ball go over the wall for a homer? Yeah, never. Last time he literally hit a home run was July 29th of last year. So <laughs> super pathetic. Nice job. Also, Chris Bryant hit a home run. He's and Avi just... Baez, amazing since getting benched. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay <laughs> if what baseball is dead becomes is a motivator for real Major League Baseball players. They they listen to the fact that they haven't hit a home run in God knows how long, and then they go out and do it. Great. Good for them. This is fun for now. Two months, Jay Hayes going to be like, oh, by the way, guys, I don't know if you saw the stats. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Joey doesn't even know me that well yet, and uh, he he already knows exactly how this is going to play out. Yep. But for now, <laughs> let's go. We we're right. Dallas <laughs> did that a couple of years ago. Last time I was involved in all this, I think Eric Hosmer got off to yeah. had a hot April. Started tweeting at me, and I was yeah. like, "How'd the rest of your year go, buddy?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was on. I was on the verge of buying Jay Hay a fucking Eric Hosmer jersey. <laughs> And then May happened. And then May oh, yeah. Happened. That, I, I was, uh, so I was in, I, I, I told you, Dallas, that I went to the mall with my mom the other day for her birthday. I wanted to buy her her first pair of Jordans. But we also made a, a pit stop in um, the sports store because they had, uh, like, they had, like, the Negro League jerseys. And I got a Josh Gibson jersey. And it has, nice. like, his name and number on the back. And it has um, like his career accomplishments are underneath his jersey number. And oh, they, ha- they had this really cool jersey that had all the Negro League teams on it. And my fucking mom was like, oh, you should get that for dad. Don't you owe, you, you owe him a jersey? Don't you have to get him a jersey or something? I was like, no, mom. I was like, Love he that. fucking he keeps Love he puts it in everyone's brains <laughs> that I owe him a jersey. I was like, I already bought him a jersey that I didn't have to buy him. And now he wants another one. And you're no. part of the problem. Like, I, it's a great jersey. I, maybe I will still get it for you as a thoughtful gift, but not because I have to. It's because I want yeah. to see that's a th- th- that. You're trying to turn what reality is. Into no, you're trying to turn like, my family against me is what you're trying to do. And it's Mandela not working. Effect. It's not real. You, I mean, the, the bet is what it is. No, your family. There's just no bets. I didn't make you're a bet with you. Why don't, why don't we just do? Why don't we just do a jersey <laughs> swap between you two? How about that? We get that one. The guy at the fucking Red Sox game with yeah. the Carabas jersey. Let's get yeah, one of those. Sick. That was sick. Guy was out there, center field bleacher. Someone DM me and they were like, don't you think like it could be his last name? Like how conceited are you to think that like yeah, that's for probably you? Probably not. It's like a, a Carabas 13 jersey at Fenway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, could be a coincidence. Very common <laughs> last name. Uh, my final thought is Jake. Open the voicemail lines for Ace fans. We're going to collect them this oh, weekend. God. We're opening up the voicemail lines because I got a lot of requests for that. I think I saw it on the Baseball is Dead Reddit. Join the conversation. There's also a Baseball is Dead Discord. Join that too. I don't know. Uh, every time we talk about Discord, I'm like, I don't know how it works. It's very scary to me. It's very intimidating. It just feels like Discord feels like the dark <laughs> web to me. And I'm just like, I'm just yeah, going to say no, it is. It does feel <laughs> like I, I, we, we both have been very upfront and forward about it. Like <laughs> Discord, super. I'm in there. Super. Yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, Super, Jay Hayes in the Discord, like that. You, you, you belong in the Discord. Both, both of you guys, like, there's something Discordy about <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you guys are both <laughs> very Discordy. <Yeah. laughs> I could feel Dallas getting higher by the second, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out of here as fast as we can. <laughs> I, so, I, I haven't seen the screen in an hour. I was gonna say you can't even open your eyes. <laughs> Oh, Dallas looks like he just like completed the last round of military training where they fucking mace you, but you have to keep your eyes open and get through the the core. <laughs> That's what he looks like. They're like, all right, now now fight off this this dog after you get maced in the face. I love that fucking dude just lick the shit out of me. <laughs> it is ten thirty a.m. in Texas right now. Uh. <laughs> yeah this guy this guy needs to protect him from himself um all right jake we're opening up the the voicemail lines for a's fans oh, got a lot of requests this morning for it but we record at 11 a.m eastern so there wasn't enough time to put out the call for it to collect them to go through them to get the best ones to put them together so we'll do that this weekend a's fans we want to hear from you 
Uh, if you need the number, I don't have it offhand, but check the baseball is dead Instagram and Twitter. The number will be there. So we'll put together the best A's fan frustration voicemails, and we'll have that for the Monday episode. Well, remember to be respectful when you leave the voicemails, guys, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jake's takes anything before we head off? I could tell Dallas was high 20 minutes ago and he was just talking and uh, he goes, oh, is everyone frozen? And we were like, no. And then he just kept going. <laughs> no one was frozen. No. <laughs> well, all of you looked at me like I was fucking crazy. <laughs> no one looked at you like anything. <laughs> I gotta go. All right. <laughs> we got. I'm gone. <laughs>